welcome everyone. I'm Laura Nettlefield. I'm a faculty member at the Institute for the Study of Human Rights and affiliate faculty with the Harriman Institute. Welcome to today's talk. It is my great pleasure to introduce Maria Krzyzewska, who is the Secretary General of the Center for Intercultural Dialogue, which is a youth-led organization in Kumanovo, North Macedonia. She is also president of the National Youth Council of Macedonia, which is a youth representative body. Currently, she is one of our Human Rights Advocates Fellows in the 2021-2022 cohort, and it is a privilege to have her with the cohort and with us here today to talk about her work. So welcome, Maria, and thank you for giving this talk. Thank you, Lara. Thank you for this opportunity. And thank you, everyone who is here and also who joins through Zoom. Uh, it's an honor for me to talk about uh, my country and young people in my country and in the cultural dial dialogue among youth. And um, so, yes, as Lara said, I'm part of the Human Rights Advocates Program. And if I have to shortly introduce myself, I would say that I'm a young person who works with other young people, empowering them to take an active part in the society, act as change makers and uh, promote and foster intercultural dialogue. Um, how I'm doing that is through non-formal education and youth work, and I will be talking uh, throughout this presentation more about uh, my work and the work of my organization, Center for Intercultural Dialogue, and what we do in, uh, in North Macedonia. But uh, before that, since my, I can say, natural habitat is the non-formal education environment, I would like this presentation actually to be more, more interactive, so I will encourage also questions during my talk, but I would first like to start with um, two questions that I will ask you actually, people who are present here and people who are present uh, for following us on Zoom. Um, I don't know if you are, uh, if you have used before Mentimeter, but I love digital tools, so I chose this one for, for today. Uh, so uh, what I will ask you to do is just let me see if the presentation works first. Okay, I think you are still not able to see the presentation. There we go. Let's try now. And just wait and just see for the sign. What you need to do is just take your phone or any other device that you have, a laptop or any device that you have nearby, and uh, open a browser that you use and go to menti.com. So menti.com and use the code that you can see above here, which is 73929187. I will ask if there is, because there might be some people from North Macedonia who are joining, please, I would ask you to skip this question because it would not be fair. So anyone else who is present uh, with us here, uh, you need the, uh, you have two options, uh, yes or no answer. And the question is, do you know where on the world map is uh, North Macedonia? I will repeat the instructions. So it's menti.com and you need to use the following code, which is 7392-9187. Okay, we already have some answers. Let's wait for a couple of more. Okay, there are people that don't know. <laughs> Okay, majority already knows. I think this is due to my uh, friends from the cohort, but let's see if there are more people that don't know where it's North Macedonia. Okay, I don't know if everybody has managed to join, but hopefully for the next question, maybe we will have more answers. So, so far, Okay, majority already knows there are some people that don't know. Uh, as I said, there might be people from the cohort that uh, knows, but also this might help to know where is North Macedonia, which happened a few days ago. Unfortunately, we didn't get to uh, participate in the World Cup, but maybe next year. So where is North Macedonia? It's in the southeast of Europe. I didn't put the whole map because we would be just like a little dot there. So yeah. You can see more closely and later on I will talk more about our geographical position and a bit more about the context of Macedonia. So my next question for you is um, just think what first comes to your mind when you hear the word youth. Everyone will have up to three 
uh, words to write. So you can write either one, two, or three. What do you think of when you hear the word youth? Let's see, a little brainstorming. And we already have some words. Energy, activism, teenagers, peace, art, volunteering, mobilization, change, foundation. Uh -huh, okay, confusion. People present here also. Yeah, feel free to participate also like this if you cannot manage to, to log into Mentimeter. Okay, activism is leading so far and hope. Those words that are more uh, visible, like with Mm, bigger letters are words that are repeating actually so far hope future and activism okay very positive things is there something i didn't read so active citizenship mobilization okay we also have rebellion pride leadership volunteering potential and possibility Okay, well, it seems that we are thinking positively when we hear about youth, and that's something that I'm happy about it. So future hope and activism are the three main words that came across this. So thank you very much for, for participating in, in this short Mentimeter. And uh, yeah, as I said, I will say a bit like few words about North Macedonia uh, and our context, because I think that's really important in order uh, for me to talk later on about the work, what we do and why we do it and why I think that that's really um, important. So North Macedonia is situated, as I already said, in the southeast of Europe. It's in the heart of the uh, Balkan Peninsula. It's um, surrounded by its neighboring countries, Serbia, Bulgaria, Greece, Albania, and uh, Kosovo. It is in Europe, but it's not part of the European Union, unfortunately, yet. Uh, but since 2005, we are a candidate member country. Uh, candidate country, actually, not a member country. Uh, these are very recent information, actually, just since yesterday when we received the first results from the census that happened last September. Um, so, yeah, as you can see, we are a very small country, not even 2 million people, so like 1.8 uh, uh, million people, and the majority are Macedonians, but we are also very uh, rich in diversity because we have... Um, minority ethnic groups like, such as Albanians, Turks, Roma, Serbs, Bosniaks, and Blacks. The previous census was done 20 years ago. So if I can compare this uh, two in these 20 years, I can say that a lot of people left Macedonia, um, around 185,000 uh, people left. And that can also be seen uh, with the youth as well. Young people in my country are considered to be from the age of 15 to the age of 29 years old. And currently, with this very recent information, uh, we are 326,733 young people. I'm one of them still like, for two more years. But comparing to the census from 20 years ago, it's like 150,000 young people less, which uh, unfortunately uh, leads to that, that we have a huge uh, brain drain and young people are uh, leaving the country because of dissatisfaction with the, uh, with the situation there. Um, next thing I want to share is regarding the names, because you might have uh, encountered or heard about Macedonia or North Macedonia or Theron. So basically, uh, Macedonia was uh, part of the, of the Yugoslavia before 1991. Uh, but in September 1991, declared uh, independence under the name Republic of Macedonia. However, due to the 27-year uh, name dispute with uh, Greece, we, would, uh, we, we were referred as the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia or with the abbreviation uh, Theron. 
Uh, and uh, later on, we solved finally that uh, name dispute uh, with Greece in uh, June 2018. And later on, in uh, the beginning of 2019, we changed our name in North Macedonia or Republic of North Macedonia, which is in use now. Um, but um, yes, regarding the citizenship, uh, we are referred to as Macedonians or citizens of North Macedonia and the language that we speak is Macedonian. So we have this North only in the name of the country. So just not to have any confusion if I by any time uh, mention Macedonia, it's I'm referring to the same country, this one. Uh, so you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, I wanted to tackle more about this multiculturalism versus interculturalism in our country. Um, are we a multicultural society? I would say indeed we are, because of you saw in the previous slide that we have, as I said, we are rich in diversity and we, I can say proudly that we are like a Balkan in a nutshell. Uh, because of all these um, ethnic communities being present. And we are indeed multicultural uh, society, but are we an intercultural society? I would say that we are still striving to become one because there are a lot of challenges that we are facing. There is, and there has always been a fragile inter-ethnic situation and lack of trust between all these communities. Um, they are existing, actually coexisting in the same society, but uh, we are lacking uh, collaboration and engaging uh, interactions uh, with each other. The, pre the primary thing, like the prim uh, primary um, axis of this division is the ethnicity, I can say. Uh, and that division has been noted by many international organizations as well and, uh, and their bodies. And um, yeah, segregation can be seen mainly, I can say, in, um, in the school education system. Uh, I can share because I'm from Kumanovo and the organization that I will talk about is established and is working in Kumanovo, which is on the southeast um, re region in, uh, in Macedonia and it's a um, very multi-ethnic uh, country. So both Macedonians, Albanians, and all the others that I already mentioned are living there. Um, our schools are divided. We have separate schools for Macedonians. We have separate schools for Albanians. And uh, we don't interact with each other. Uh, there are some examples of uh, schools that are considered to be the same entity, for example, the economic high school in my city, uh, but the um, buildings where they are located, located are uh, like distance for several kilometers. And there is another example of primary schools, one Macedonian and one Albanian, that are uh, situated in the same yard, and they are actually using the um, the same gym but the the kids never meet because uh, they are going in different shifts and that's exactly the neighborhood where our youth center is uh, is located um that would be the case actually with me as well because um i grew up in a almost monoethnic uh, neighborhood and i studied in primary school and then later on in high school where there were no albanians for example so if i didn't join this youth sector and if I didn't engage with the uh, organization, I would not be able to meet uh, Albanians uh, before going to university, for example, um, because that was my that was my reality. Also, the places that I was going out, like the cafes, the restaurants, they are very divided. I mean, nowadays, the situation has started being like to, to change. But uh, back then when I was studying, so yeah, when until I was 15 years old, when I actually met the organization and started going, I never met an Albanian in my life, for example, and we were living in the same city. And that's a reality for, for many other young people in the, in the country. So um, furthermore, what I wanted to say about this is, and why there is this uh, tension that I mentioned has been existing for, for a long time. And it kind of escalated in 2001 when we had, um, an armed conflict in my country between Macedonians and Albanians, uh, where the ethnic uh, Albanian rebels from the National Liberation Army were demanding for greater uh, rights for Albanians. Um, and they, they were claiming that Macedonian majority oppresses the Albanians. And so there was like this armed conflict, which of course resulted with a lot of uh, victims from both sides. And it was like, 20 years ago, but still like people are carrying this trauma for the rest of their lives. 
And um, since then, the Macedonian society became even more segregated. And um, whenever there is like political crisis in my country, we always are fearing that that might happen again. And that was kind of the case in 2015, very recently. Uh, it was uh, on Europe Day, actually, 9th of May 2015, uh, when we had a um, shootout in my country, so insane in Humanova, and the situation was like really, um, how can I say, really, really fragile because we didn't know like will the situation repeat or not. Luckily, it lasted only for two days. It was a clash between police and armed group that were later on um, prosecuted as, uh, as a terrorist group. So it was only for two days. There were victims, of course. And again, this trauma that I said that people will still carry in their lives like for their, for their lifetime. Um, is it better now? I would say yes, there are some improvements. Um, I mean, I'm starting from, from myself and that's why I say that young people should be the ones who should lead this change and start um, mingling around, starting to getting to know the others and not carrying these burdens from the previous generations that might have been, I don't know, maybe our parents have been fighting, uh, have been fighting in 2001, but I mean, we are not guilty for what has happened. So um, I think that there is improvement and uh, we are striving to become this intercultural uh, society that we want. Uh, we have uh, um, a strategy for development of the concept of one society for all and uh, interculturalism, which was adopted in 2020. So it means that the government is also striving to, to make some progress in this. Um, this, uh, this strategy is uh, based actually on this principle that the challenge of living together in a diverse society could only be met if we can live together as equals in dignity, which is taken from the uh, white paper and the cultural dialogue uh, from Council of Europe. And I truly believe in, in, in this formula that we can achieve the intercultural society and build it actually only if we uh, respect uh, every community and we respect every culture in the community and we uh, work on integration, dialogue and, and social cohesion. And um, only when we can celebrate all the differences that we have, whether those are like on ethnic basis or any other, and we can highlight and yeah, celebrate those, those differences as our strongest asset, only then we can say that we are building a society uh, which is alien to discrimination and, and prejudice. But still nowadays, we do have a lot of these prejudice and stereotypes, especially on the, on the ethnic base. Um, uh, why uh, this is all relevant that I shared about the situation is uh, because that's how my organization, Center for Intercultural Dialogue, was born, basically. Uh, because young people from Manovo, from both Macedonian and uh, Albanian ethnicity, gathered and decided that, uh, okay, uh, we are a divided community, we don't have spaces like where to meet, where to interact, where to get to know each other, so decided to establish um, Youth that organization that will provide these uh, opportunities for uh, for young people, and uh, I couldn't find a picture from 2006 where the organization was established, but this one is from 2007, and actually here you can see uh, Boschko and Stefan, who are uh, two of the founders of Center for Intercultural Dialogue, and uh, this written here is Mir, which is in Macedonian peace, which is like a visible message for for the whole society in in, in the city. Um, that was how it was established. And now this is one picture of uh, an event that we had in Multiculti. The premises there are actually the youth center that we are running from 2010. Uh, so the organization is running already for 16 years. It's a youth-led organization, uh, always changing generations. So people that were that I mentioned that were founders, they are of course um, very dear people, but they are not running the organization right now. I now have the um, position as secretary general and part of the executive board in the organization, but the uh, majority of us are uh, under 29 and also all of our, mostly of our uh, members are also um, beneath 29 years old. Um, it, it is waiting already, as I said, for 16 years and it has uh, always been working on creating a diverse, responsible and cooperative communities where 
every citizen, no matter of their background, will have uh, the same role and will contribute to social development and, and change. Our motto is building the change makers and uh, multiply, multiplying um, everything. We are offering different uh, opportunities and um, everything through human rights education, through non-formal education and through, uh, through uh, local youth work in Kumanova in the youth center. Um, what else I can mention? Yeah, our beneficiaries are um, mostly young people, sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly, because we also work with, uh, for example, with teachers, with youth workers, uh, with um, city council members, with um, public administration, so many other stakeholders that are relevant uh, in this case, and we are considering the young people as uh, the creators, but also beneficiaries of our activities. Because throughout the years, um, our activities has been, have been changing uh, depending on what the young people needs are. Um, it started uh, in, yeah, this is the youth center. It, uh, it was established in 2010 with the help of, uh, at first it was supported by UNICEF and later on it was supported by many other inter, uh, international organizations. Um, the main aim is to, to reduce the gap between the young people in the city and provide them a safe space where they can come, interact, meet each other and um, learn together and grow personally and professionally throughout all the programs and opportunities that, that we are offering. Uh, what we uh, strive to do is to have um, continuously um, building also self-sustainable uh, methods because uh, whenever we are working, I don't know if like we're working on CIT Academy or leadership or any other, we are trying to build the capacities of young people, building their soft skills so they can further on um, use those skills in, in, in life. Uh, we have so far, like so many young people have went through our programs and they have learned also about advocacy and they have impl implemented a lot of uh, initiatives. Uh, one thing that is very specific for, for our work is co-facilitation in Macedonian and Albanian. Anytime we work in um, on local level, we work uh, bilingually. So here on the picture is me and my uh, colleague uh, doing a local workshop on human rights and, and hate speech. And we uh, strive to nurture this thing because we truly believe that the language should not be a problem, even though not every Macedonian speaks Albanian and not all the Albanians in Macedonia speak um, Macedonian, that shouldn't be a problem. And we have been proving that for years because several times we had organized also uh, theater performances, building well theater performances. And it's, it's very satisfying when we see that people are like at the end laughing in the same language. So you don't have to maybe understand each word, but definitely you can uh, interact and engage with people no matter on the, on the language. What kind of opportunities we, we offer? I mentioned CIT Academy is our academy for for leaders, which is a long-term project, um, which is tackling many different topics which are important for building the leadership skills. But we also have many other like training opportunities, seminars, workshops, etc. Uh, we have been organizing a lot of consultation meetings, for example. I believe this was the picture for like what kind of youth center you want. Also many consultations for the law and youth participation and youth policy, even before it was adopted. Um, every time we try to engage young people to co-create the not only the programs that they want to attend, but also to co-create the space. This youth center it's been in the same location for many years, but it has constantly been um, changed, and it's always through involvement of young people itself, uh, themselves, but also with the community. The neighbors are always helping. And uh, yeah, many other activities that uh, can be found here, are like some activities for spending uh, leisure time, such as board games, um, table tennis. Um, I don't know, like we're just drinking uh, coffee and chatting or helping with the homework even. It's their space so the young people can use it however they want. And something that 
I'm very proud of and we very much this uh, very much like this kind of activities is that we are celebrating also holidays together. This picture is from Baklaviada, which is um, just right uh, after eight uh, Mubarak, if I'm pronouncing the holiday well. So it's like a Muslim holiday in addition to baklava. So we invite everyone to come bring baklava, but also try it from other people and interact. So it's like they're having fun, dancing, etc. There are also this kind of um, celebrations for other um, for other holidays, such as for Easter, for example, we are organizing painting eggs or something which is tradition, let's say, in Macedonian or in Orthodox. Um, culture. And this last picture uh, here from the Youth Center is a very recent picture where we can see our two youth workers that I believe are uh, joining us today on Zoom. So maybe later on uh, they can share in person life from the Youth Center, a couple of words of what is happening out there now and um, some words about the organization from their perspective of you. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of volunteers, but I will let them talk about it uh, later. What I wanted to uh, end here about Multiculti is that uh, it's a space that uh, it's recognized not only on local level in Kumanova, but also on national level and international level. Uh, people have heard about Multiculti as a good practice and um, it's a place where a lot of lifelong uh, relationships and friendships and partnerships have been uh, established and it's our I can say safe and happy space in the in the city. Um, right now, it's functioning as a municipality youth center because um, uh, due to the law and youth participation and youth policies that I mentioned before, which was adopted uh, in January 2020, it's uh, provisioning that every municipality should open a youth center. So it's already like these mechanisms for youth participation are being recognized at national level and are in the legislation. So municipality is now providing a small budget for running of the youth center. And that's how, thanks to, to that, we have two new youth workers, which were actually our volunteers in, uh, before. So as you can see, our constant generations are, are changing. And that's how actually my path was. So at the end, I just have a couple of slides more, a couple of more pictures to share about you of how uh, how was my path in all of this and how I, as I said in the beginning, like from a girl who was raised in almost mono ethnic because yeah, there, there were no, not Albanians, but for example, there were like Rama or Serbs in my schools and in my neighborhoods. Um, but yeah, how I get to this point of being the secretary general of the organization and doing everything that I already shared. Um, I was, my first encounter with non-formal education was in 2019. When the teachers in my school, I was still at the last year in my primary school, they asked me to participate in a youth exchange in Switzerland. And that was my first encounter. I first saw how easy to work in an interactive environment, non-formal education. So I really, I can say I loved it. And I, I actually fell in love with non-formal education. So I was constantly looking for more opportunities afterwards. And in 2010, I uh, learned about the organization, Center for Intercultural Dialogue, that is established. It was just starting running the youth center. So I've uh, enrolled in many different workshops and I went on many different um, educational mobilities. Um, and uh, yeah, this is just one of the pictures there. Afterwards, I mean, in the meantime, I was also started to, to volunteering. I had organized together with the volunteer club with local and international volunteers, many initiatives on local levels, such as celebrating some international days like the International Volunteers Day or the Human Rights Day or, I don't know, the International Day Against Racism and many, many others. Um, and uh, in 2000, end of 2014, uh, because I was already at uh, university studying law, I started working uh, on a street law program uh, together with a partner organization, Lips Educational Forum. That were my beginnings as a facilitator and trainer, which I further on developed even more. So now I'm working both as a trainer and facilitator on many different topics. In 2017, I started working in the organization as a staff member, first as an international mobility officer, then also a coordinator for international volunteers, project coordinator. And since 2017, I'm part of the executive board. Uh, my first portfolio was following um, 
local and national youth policies. This is now my uh, second mandate with this incredible people here uh, as uh, part of the executive board. Uh, and now my portfolio is secretary general. Um, but in the meantime, I became also president of the National Youth Council, which is the youth representative body in the country. Uh, I'm there also on behalf of uh, TIB, but that's like my ad additional role for advocating for better, uh, better youth rights in the, in the country. Um, and yeah, at the end, I just wanted to share like why I'm doing this. This is just one picture of me uh, facilitating um, a workshop. Um, why I love it, it's because I, I can say that I see this change in young people because it's very... It's very satisfying when you see like in the beginning of some workshop or a training when young people come and they're very shy and they're like sitting like Macedonians on one side, Albanians on the other side because they don't know each other. And then how the time uh, goes by at the end, uh, they are already mingling, uh, chatting, I don't know, you see them later on on the street uh, going for a coffee together, or I don't know, see, I constantly see pictures on Instagram, how they hang out even outside the, the activities. So for me, that's like really a satisfaction because I know that we did it right and we, we changed something. Um, and yeah, this is one of my favorites, uh, my, one of my favorite projects, which is the School Against Hate Speech. This was the last one that was organized, I think the last summer, yeah, 2021. And here you can see what they left on the wall, which is like a message for breaking the hate and starting to, to get them to know each other. I guess that would be it. So here are just some contact information for the organization and I would be happy to chat with you and answer any question or, you know, hear from you, uh, your view. Great. Thank you so much. Ryan. So I'm sure we have a lot of questions. Um, thank you, Stephanie, for joining us. Let me start out with a, a question. You, I, you said that youth priorities are always changing in the country. Um, what are they today? And, you know, in a perfect world, where would your programmatic activities, what would they be or how would, how would you change them if resources weren't an object? Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, the world is changing. The, the youth needs are changing. Right now, we live in this digital era, and I think that also with the pandemic we realized how important it is to be digital literacy for example so we can use the benefits of it and connect uh connect with the others but yeah i think one one need that remains is uh, that one to have safe spaces for um, meeting each other and um, just yeah having that opportunity to get to know each other but also how the priorities change. Like I mentioned that young people are leaving Macedonia and usually why they mention like the researches that are showing that a lot of young people also from those who are in the country would leave if they had the opportunity to leave. And they are mentioning the low quality of life, uh, the bad educational system. So regarding this, I think that from our work, what we can offer is this complementary non-formal education system. Great. Maggie, you can um, introduce yourself. Yes. Just like. Well, okay. I am Maggie Metley. I am the Communications and Outreach Coordinator for the District for Study of Human Rights. And I was wondering, uh, how do you do the outreach, because of my background, how do you do the outreach for the community? How do you get the, the young people involved? And how, I imagine that changes a lot. Mm -hmm. So how do you go about that? Yeah, well, the organization is working in Kumanovo, which is the second biggest city in the country, but we are also um, have, we're also like um, working with uh, Lipkovo and Stara Nagorichina, which are like two uh, municipalities which are close, close by. Lipkovo is mainly with Albanians and Stara Nagorichina is mainly with Macedonians. Uh, so we are collaborating with schools mainly. That's our like primary contact, how we are reaching. For example, I remember that when I learned about the organization, I learned it in school. Like during the school break, there were volunteers from the organization that were promoting the activities with flyers and telling us what they offer. So that's how I learned. And that's how we continue. One thing is that, and the other one is like um, 
how do you say it like we're uh, the word by mouth or something word. like that we're like passing from one to another there are many um because of the pandemic the youth center was closed for a while we we couldn't organize activities indoors and like there was a lot of uh, young people that started asking oh i i know a friend that was attending your event can i please start it volunteering in your organization can i come what do you offer so yeah that's another thank you yeah. Um, uh, last two questions. The first one, I, I, if I understand well, in the center you try to, to show these walls between Macedonians and, and Albanians. So when you're talking with these young people, you're talking about the, the bad things, about where the, the bad thing that's happened in the, I don't know, 10, 10, 20 years ago, how they feel about it, or you don't talk about that, that this hard things mm -hmm. or, or, or you promote or you try to to give a broader perspective of the conflict so how the center deal with this and the other the other question is why your flag is like a sun <laughs> why is the, the flag of your ah, country uh -huh. like a sun that's my two questions yeah well thank you for the question um the first one uh we don't actually work i mean you cannot talk with young people that didn't go through that. Like the conflict was uh, 21 years ago and they have not been part of it. That's why I'm saying that's why we don't even have, don't need to carry the burden of it. Uh, so we are not working, we are not discussing specifically the conflict, but we are trying to provide them uh, many different opportunities and to see that together they are equal in everything that we do. So no matter if it's like, um, I don't know, workshop or training for leadership, or it's for advocacy, or it's for um, recognizing and combating hate speech, or many other topics, like they are they're the same. That's one of the core values of non-formal education, that everybody is learning from everybody. And that's what we are trying to, um, to show them, not to touch upon like something that uh, maybe they cannot even deal with it or not, not discuss it. Uh, and your question about the sun, yeah, I love our our flag, uh, but actually uh, because it's a specific one and it's it's the motivation inspiration was the sun. Why I cannot share? I don't have like exact information, but uh, it, I can share that it was changed before. It was looking even more like a sun, but um, yeah, <laughs> I have to Google it myself. I think. <laughs> we'll find out. Other questions? Just want to okay, uh, just to find out, do you like share your back to back? I'm really saying best practices which can be picked from from you. Do you like maybe with uh, other factors based in our parts of the world? Yeah, well, I can say that we work on three levels, like on local level is what we do with the youth center and uh, including these two municipalities that we that I mentioned. On national level is, uh, for example, my participation and me being a president in the National Youth Council and actually my organization was one of the founders of the National Youth Council and also one of the founders of the Union of Youth Workers. So we do a lot of work on uh, national level regarding youth policies, but we also work on international level. We are part Part of several international organizations and we have established a lot of partnerships uh, throughout the whole world. We even have like global projects uh, with Fiji, Cameroon, Canada and many other uh, countries uh, involved. So yeah, indeed, uh, one of the also strongest um, thing that we do is that we provide a lot of opportunities for attending mobility, educational mobilities. And that's uh, how I started as well in 2009, which I mentioned that first one was not through Center for Intercultural Dialogue, but many young people have attended a um, training course or seminar or any other educational mobility, which was specifically like not provided by TIT in the in multi for example, but it was from another partner organization anywhere in Europe or even abroad. And usually when uh, young people go once on this kind of mobility, they kind of 
want to go more because for them that might have been like the first time that they went abroad first time that they met someone who is not from their country so kind of their perspective widens they learn many things and um, for me that's a very um, good way of how you can teach someone like, by experience mm -hmm. If there are no other questions, maybe we can, I don't know if we can uh, include the uh, host I would like sure. to hear yeah. from the youth workers. I think they are uh, present. Yeah, Natalia. Natalia, yes. Just so you can see in life how the youth center looks like and maybe they can share what they do now. Because it's been a while since I was there. Yeah. And there. <laughs> Hello. Hello, welcome. Hi. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I hope you're all doing good. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Okay, so I'm Divina Seydi, a 19-year-old student, and I'll start by saying that I have been a volunteer at Center for Intercultural Dialogue and Multiculti for almost seven years. But now I'm really, really grateful and honored to share that I'm a staff member as the youth worker at Multiculti which Maria mentioned is the only youth center which is located in Kumanovo and it was founded in 2010. Uh, this uh, youth center goes under Center for Intercultural Dialogue or CID, which is our organization. And it was founded for the reason of to bring the youth together because as it was mentioned, we live in a multi-ethnical uh, country and a city, but uh, unfortunately our city uh, has the issue of like uh, segregation, it's the main issue. So our youth center by implementing different activities, projects and youth exchanges constantly makes an impact in, on our society and we unify everyone. So I think it's really important to also mention that the people that come in here at our youth center, we call them all a family, even the people that come for the first time and everything, we don't see anyone different or anything. It's only unifying us. And when I mentioned projects and activities, I let Natalia to explain more about it. So hello to, to everyone. Thank you for having us. Uh, greetings to all of you that are there. So I'm Natalia. I was volunteer, uh, like Delina said, for almost seven years in Multiculti and CID. I'm a fourth year student, but I'm also the part of uh, CID staff as a youth worker. Uh, so when we are talking like uh, the, about the project, the projects and the activities that are happening here in uh, our youth center, uh, we can say that uh, we are planning planning everything with our youth and our volunteers. We also have a vol volunteers club. Uh, that our volunteers club is actually the bridge between uh, us, the youth workers, and the volunteers, uh, because uh, the volunteers uh, there there is a two. Uh, <clears throat> Two volunteers that are uh, like the more active, more active, and uh, they're communi communicating with us, telling what are the uh, youth uh, volunteers want and need. Then we are having like a discussion or meeting together, and we are planning the monthly and weekly schedule for the uh, for multi multi for activities and the uh, uh, workshops. So uh, I will mention that we have like. Uh, like the activities weekly can be uh, movie nights, karaoke nights, board game nights, or we, even if they want, we can have a dis discussion about the topic that uh, they're wanting to. And uh, about the <clears throat> uh, workshops we are doing, uh, we have a plenty, like uh, me and Elvina uh, almost came from one in Berovo. Uh, so we are uh, here, like, so that's, uh, that's, everything for from me so uh, that uh, was a uh, little about our uh, youth center uh, maria mentioned everything we are uh, also part of the CID academy so we are we are CID kids actually and now we are born and raised in CID and now we are here thank you <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> Yeah, exactly what I said. But you, when you mentioned how many years you are in CIT, you made me feel old. <laughs> 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 because they were participating on my workshops. And as they said, like, yeah, I think we all grew up kind of in CIT because since I was 15, I was there. So, yeah, we indeed feel uh, like a family, not like only colleagues. And 
yeah, but really we feel it like a family. So that's why I'm also I kind of more like, a lot of emotions when I talk about the, the organization. Thank you for joining us. I know that you are tired because yeah, they they just came back from from a, several days training in, in Vero. Yeah. We just arrived, yes. <laughs> but it's okay. Uh, thank you for having us. Thank you, Maria. We miss you. And uh, I hope we'll see you soon. We're really grateful for this opportunity. I hope you have the best time there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank see you in May. May. That's great. Any other questions? Yeah. What are some things that we can do to improve like youth or like some insights or other things we can try like throughout the world in New York? Yeah. What are some things that we could try to improve like the youth environment in other parts of the world? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Try to spread it. Good question. Well, thank you for this question. Um I think that everybody has heard that uh, people are saying, especially politicians, that the world should remain on youth and that youth are the future and everything. But I'm constantly trying to advocate that yes. That's true, but the youth is also present and we are young in the present tense, like now. Like if you wait, if you wait for like 10 more years, no, I will not be young, they will not be young even. So I think that young people are um, need to be perceived like more serious and need to be given a chance. Uh, because if we talk about young people, we need to ask young people what they need. And only the young people knows the best what they need. So if we want to build these leaders that, will, uh, that we will leave the world in their hands, then we need to give them a chance now. Uh, and that can be done like through many different things, but uh, definitely not just um, like consultations and then not doing anything, but they need to be meaningfully engaged in every decision making when it's about uh, youth. So I'm really <clears throat> sad when I see, for example, politicians talking about, I don't know, whatever, and then there are young people standing behind them. And my point is like, okay, what? Yeah, like you want to show that young people are engaged? No, if young people are engaged, let them talk, let them say. Uh, what they want, let them sit in the same table and propose solution and try to find solution together. I think that um, young people can really contribute in many in many fields, and uh, some of them have really really shown that. Like I don't know, for example, Greta Thunberg. Everybody knows about her, and she's advocating for something that um, everybody should be concerned nowadays, and many other young people. So yeah, meaningful, but really meaningful your participation when they are giving given voice, but also listen, listen to. Thank you for the question. I would just follow up and ask, um, could you speak a little bit about the HRAP program and how that has helped your professional development and what things have you learned in the program that you will take back to North Macedonia and to your organization? <laughs> Yeah, well, um, I'm here now on Human Rights Advocates Program together with 11 other advocates from all around the world. Um, all amazing people doing great job there and uh, working on different fields. Uh, I'm the only one that is working with, um, with youth on youth issues, but there are other people that are working on LGBT rights, uh, people that are working with uh, indigenous women, uh, working on the, um, domestic violence and people who have experienced trauma. So a lot of um, variety and that is making us even like richer, which I really love about this program. Um, we had, uh, we were actually lucky to have extension in two semesters. So the previous semester, we had a lot of capacity building uh, workshops online. So we had a chance to meet with those uh, incredible people from Human Rights Watch, uh, from many other international organizations that uh, shared with us a lot of um, useful information. And now every one of us is attending uh, two classes at Columbia University, which is totally different and amazing experience, uh, especially because I shared how uh, the education is unfortunately very, that quality in my country. So it's like I'm immensely thankful for having this opportunity to see how the education is here at, at Colombia. 
and also a lot of networking uh, moments. All right, wonderful. Any other other fellows? Would you like to comment? No, oh, just thank you for today. Like uh, there's a study even back home when, when uh, I'm, I'm by I'm from Asia, program also from Georgia, and uh, when I mentioned, oh, I have called a cover from the Macedonia, they were like, wow, I mean, where, where's South? Like where's North Macedonia? They it's, <laughs> it's like such a good uh, presentation to explain it to us exactly what is Macedonia about. And, yeah, just very sad. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything else you'd like to comment on? Well, no, there are no questions from the online participants. No, I think we're fine. Well, no, I would just like to thank you, Lara and Hariman Institute, for this opportunity for being here in this program and for having the chance to talk uh, about your participation in North Macedonia here. Great, thank you for joining us and we wish you the best in the remaining weeks of this program. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everyone.